Good morning, everybody. My name is Faris Hawari, and I am the Dean of the College of Natural and Health Sciences and a Professor of Environmental Sciences and Engineering at Zaid University. I have been asked by the Conference Organizing Committee to give a very short presentation on climate and water issues. And I will focus my remark on the uh, Middle East and North Africa. In this region, the Middle East and North Africa, as in many parts of the world, water is one of the most important natural resources. And indeed, as the UAE President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed said a few years back, water is more important than oil for UAE. And I would say countries with a similar uh, water situation have no difference. Now, the major or key challenges that faces the water sector in the MENA region can be expressed in the following points. Rapid growth in domestic and industrial water demands, increasing costs of water development, wasteful and misuse of existing water supplies, threats to ecosystems, declining water quality, subsidies, distorting incentives, and limited cost recovery. Now, these challenges have been discussed in many conferences, meetings, workshops, and experts, um, you know, local, uh, regional, and international experts recommended two main scenarios to deal with water scarcity in this region, the MENA region. The first is to enhance the sustainable water production, and the second is to improve the water demand management options, especially the demand or the water demand in the agricultural uh, sector, and I would say also in the industrial and urban uh, sectors or residential sectors as well. You can see here in this uh, diagram uh, a snapshot, uh, a snapshot of the state of water in the MENA region. The countries in the MENA region can be clustered in three categories in terms of water quality and quantity severities. For example, Algeria, Egypt, Iraq, Lebanon, Morocco, Syria, and Tunisia fall under the high water quality severity and low water quantity severity, whereas Jordan, Palestine, and Yemen fall under the high water quality severity and high water quantity severity. Now, these three countries are suffering the most. And if you look at uh, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and United Arab Emirates, they all fall under the category of low water quality severity and high water quantity uh, severity. These countries, they uh, have uh, most of their water resources from desalination uh, uh, plants as well as groundwater resources. Now, as you can see in this map, uh, you know, several countries and their major cities uh, in the region share both uh, surface and groundwater resources. They, sure, they share surface and groundwater resources. And it is fair to say that the region, the MENA region, is the most water stressed or water stressed uh, in the world. Uh, we have in the region either arid countries which means even with management options, they will not be able to overcome the impact of water scarcity on their socioeconomic development. Whereas the hyper-arid countries, they can uh, do that or they can overcome the uh, impact of water scarcity using management options. Now we have another countries or another group of countries or category uh, which is the transboundary countries. Now, this category uh, have uh, their water resources outside or originate outside their borders. Um, many publications and many international organizations, uh, decision makers, presentations predicted a future conflict over water uh, in the region, and even some people or experts, they went further. They expected an economic break on the socioeconomic development, or, uh, or they expected a break on the socioeconomic development due to the increasing pressure 
on the water resources in the MENA region. Now, I personally believe that uh, uh, water challenges should promote collaboration and innovation to deal with the uh, challenges that result from or come out of the uh, water scarcity issues. The elephant in the room is the uh, climate change. Uh, and uh, the climate change will put further pressure on the already declining water resources. Uh, it will put a pressure on the quality and the quantity, especially in the arid uh, regions. Uh, from this diagram, which is a uh, you know, simple diagram, uh, you know, one can observe that, the, that there is a significant increase in the water demand and consumption associated with uh, uh, hot weather. And, you know, just we can imagine uh, if this uh, trend is, a scale up, is a scaled up at a regional uh, or a global scale. And not only in terms of uh, months, but on an annual basis or as a continuous trend. Uh, you know, one can imagine the scary impact of the climate change or the hot weather on the uh, already declining and the pressurized water resources, especially in arid and semi arid regions. Now, if we think of the uh, you know, options or the uh, design of the future. Uh, demand uh, and uh, management options of water, and if we think of the future sustainable water production scenarios, they all actually will depend on the uh, future climate uh, changes and future climate models and the predictions, and they will also depend on the future exposed population. And our efforts in environmental schools and uh, environmental departments, environmental research institutions should focus on dealing with the climate change causes to deal with it and should focus also on the remediation technologies. And, uh, uh, you know, also we should think or work on to construct local climate change scenarios. And, uh, uh, you know, why we want to do that? I mean, because these are very important to deal with the uh, expected or possible conflicts among the water consuming sectors, the residential, the uh, urban, the industrial, and the agriculture. And also it will deal with the uh, you know, expected uh, uh, you know, conflict, uh, which I hope it will not happen between the uh, countries that share transboundary water resources. It will also uh, deal or give us uh, uh, some uh, uh, insights about how to deal with the expected breaks uh, on the uh, socioeconomic development that some people or some experts are uh, predicting as a result of uh, the future water scarcity or the you know the, um, the, the the increase of the impact uh, the future impact of the water scarcity on the uh, socioeconomic developments. And also we can uh, uh, imagine other uh, uh, negative impact that could be sparked by uh, uh, additional pressure that caused by climate change. Uh, one of the thing, one of the uh, impacts actually, or that we need to think about is the impact of uh, climate change and water uh, resources on food security. Now in the United Arab Emirates, uh, water production was linked to clean energy. The country also sponsored wide awareness uh, programs and uh, measures to deal with and promote water demand uh, management uh, options and solutions. And uh, the country also sponsored many initiatives to curb carbon dioxide emission, such as carbon capture and storage, and the increase uh, uh, you know, in the size of mangrove uh, forest uh, across the country, the country and the different Emirates, and many other uh, options. Uh, this actually concludes my very short presentation, and, and, and I will be more than happy to take uh, questions, and thank you very much.